Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking all there is to know about hydrating acids. On this channel, we've already covered in many videos exfoliating acids. They're the ones that break the bonds between the dead skin cells and the glowing skin cells that are waiting to break through. They retexture the skin and give you that glowing, gorgeous complexion we all crave. That's exfoliating acids. But not all acids are exfoliating. Some are hydrating. I'm talking about hyaluronic acid, the old favorite, and the new upstart on the block, polyglutamic acid. How do these two products work? What are the pros? What are the cons? What are my personal recommendations for um, products that if you want to add these into your skincare routine, and who could benefit from them? We're gonna break it down short, sharp, and quick so we get straight to the point and hopefully it help you to understand whether you need any of these products, whether they will help you enhance your skincare routine, and just how they work. What are the differences between the two? So if that's how it sounds interesting, keep watching to the end because um, I'm gonna be giving you my personal product recommendations for both types of acid all of them available at the drugstore so don't break the bank and purse friendly prices so let's start i guess with the older of the two hyaluronic acid leave an image of it there hundreds of different products on the market and hyaluronic acid just went mad about four years ago where everyone jumped on the bandwagon it then started becoming like ubiquitous in every single skincare product everything was formulated with hyaluronic acid had hyaluronic acid it added in every sheet mask had it every serum had it and it just went mad that's when i kind of lost interest in it as a product i think if something gets overused i kind of switch off and think mm, it's not it's not going to be for me and i sort of lose interest in it however it's not because I didn't like the product. Hyaluronic acid can be very difficult to find the right product for you because some of them can be quite tacky, can be quite sticky, it can leave a film on the skin. So you've got to really work to find one that works well for you. But when you do, it is a beautiful, beautiful product. What it is, is it's a humectant which draws water and is absorbed water. It can absorb four times its own weight in water and hold that in the um, lower levels of the skin. So it gives you a plump, much more youthful looking because of that plumpness and well hydrated complexion. It doesn't tend to leave, if you choose the right product, leave a film on the skin. It's absorbed um, um, into the skin, which and then it does its work in the lower levels of the skin. Hyaluronic acid is beautiful as a humectant. A humectant just meaning drawing water into the skin, hydrating the skin. You've got to be very careful because not all hyaluronic acids are created vegan. So if you're living a plant-based lifestyle, double check and just read through um, the various blurbs on the website to make sure you're choosing a vegan one if you do want to try a hyaluronic acid. Um, and again, the price point of these shouldn't be too high. I know that some people are using the Dr. Barbara Sturm hyaluronic acid, which is like $150. Ridiculous. The hyaluronic acid is a really cheap prod um, ingredient to formulate and put into a product. It doesn't need to cost more than $10. If you're paying more than $10 for your hyaluronic acid, you are being ripped off and you need to change product. It benefits of it are all about the hydration. It's gonna help plump the skin, it's gonna help um, to preserve the moisture, which means um, a lot of your other skincare, which you then use afterwards, is gonna penetrate better because it's not just gonna be zapped up by the dry, parched skin. It's gonna help the product to go deeper into the skin so you get a better, more effective skincare routine. And it's a beautiful, beautiful addition. My personal recommendation, if you want to include a hyaluronic acid in your skincare routine, is the Inculist Hyaluronic Acid. I'll leave an image of it there. I love, love, love this product. It's the only one I feel you could actually layer other serums on top of. And because like I say, it helps deliver those serums deeper into the skin, you want to use it as your first serum and then follow up with your subsequent ones. It's the only one I know that's sunk straight into the skin so it doesn't ball up or peel or just peel and sit awkwardly on the skin when you're trying to add other products on top. Game changing, I love it. It's five pounds here in the UK, it's eight dollars in the US. Definitely, definitely check that out. If you haven't found a hyaluronic acid that you like, the Inkalist, you will adore. Now, moving on to its upstart sister, polyglutamic acid. Now, polyglutamic acid is fantastic in terms of hydration again, but it works in a very different way. Much easier to find a vegan um, polyglutamic acid because it actually comes from fermented soybeans. Um, so it's much more easy to find a plant-based natural um, polyglutamic acid than it can be to find a hyaluronic acid. 
Um, it works very differently to hyaluronic acid. Yes, it hydrates, but in a different way. So it will draw the skin. Some studies have shown it's 10 times more effective at retaining water than hyaluronic acid. There is still a little bit of doubt surrounding that. So take that with a grain of salt. But in theory, it is better at retain retaining water and attracting water um, than hyaluronic acid. It also leaves a film on the skin. So by leaving that film, it prevents transepidermal water loss. That's where the water is evaporated from the skin into the atmosphere, particularly difficult to control if you live in hot climates and humid climates. Um, the water is taken from the skin, dehydrating it further. What polyglutamic acid does is not only does it draw moisture to itself, but then creates that film which prevents the evaporation, the transepidermal water loss from the skin. So it's kind of like a dual purpose. A hyaluronic acid is going to be super silky and serum-like. A polyglutamic acid is much more like a gel or a moisturizing cream. That's just the nature of the product and how it interacts and how, it's, how, it's, how it works. It will leave a um, film on the skin. So I like to use it slightly differently. If you're using hyaluronic acid, you want to use it as your first serum because it's going to help draw all those other serums deeper into the skin. If you're using polyglutamic acid, you want to use it as the last step before you moisturize it and SPF because if you're putting a barrier on the skin, which is what it will form, it's going to mean that all the other products you put on top don't penetrate as well. So it's kind of the opposite in terms of supporting penetration as hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid, you use first in your serum steps. Polyglutamic acid, you use last just before your moisturizer. Now, I, it's a reasonably new product, so there's not a huge number of um, uh, products out there which, which include polyglutamic acid. Um, one that I would fully recommend because of the price, it's £14.99 here in the UK, it's under $20 in the US, is, I'll leave an image of there, the Inculus Polyglutamic Acid. Now, do I think you need hyaluronic acid in your skincare? I actually do. I think there's definitely a place for it. I think even if you aren't suffering with dry, dehydrated skin, it's still going to supercharge the rest of your serums and help them go deeper into the skin. So I think actually, even just as an agent for transferring um, and supporting the other steps in your skincare routine, it's a great addition. You can snap up a five pound hyaluronic acid and use it in your skincare. So yes, I do think most people should benefit from a hyaluronic acid and should have it in their skincare routine. Polyglutamic acid, on the other hand, I'm less sold on. I think it tends to be more expensive, which is a little bit off-putting. I don't like the sensation of having film on my face, and you do definitely know it's there. It does support with the trans-epidermal water loss, but unless you are super dry and dehydrated, or live in a super hot, humid climate, I don't think there's a need to really be preventing this trans-epidermal water loss. It's a natural bodily function. I don't think you need to be preventing it unless there are climatic reasons why, or you are very, very dry skinned. So I think it's a much more niche product. Do I think I need 10 times the hydration that I can get from hyaluronic acid? No, I always say to people when they say, I need polyglutamic acid, I'm like, why? If we keep going like this 10 times more, then there'll be something that comes out that's 20 times more um, water retaining than polyglutamic acid. We're just gonna end up drenched. We're just gonna be walking around constantly wet. Nobody needs that level of hydration. And so I think you end up paying for something that I don't necessarily think you need in your skincare routine. There are those, the bougie amongst us, that actually say the two work really well together and actually combining the two high, um, hydrating acids is the best way forward. Now, you can absolutely use the two together. You can absolutely see benefits of using both. So the hyaluronic acid will do a deeper level hydration and draw the products in. The polyglutamic acid will do a moisturize um, and surface moisture, much more of a surface hydration and lock in preventing the transepidermal water loss. So yes, you can use the two together. Yes, there's no contraindications and they do work well in synergy together. Do I think you need to? No. Is it bougie as heck? Absolutely but I'm not going to stop you if you want to. It could, if, particularly if you're very dry skinned, you could really benefit from this. Um, I would recommend if you are going to use polyglutamic acid that you ditch the moisturiser, use this as your moisturiser. It leaves that film, it does that surface hydration as well as the deeper level um, hydration. You don't need a moisturiser on top of this unless you are super dry. Particularly if you're oily like myself, once you've got that mask on you don't really want to put other products on top um, I just don't think it'll sit very well and would create some of that sweating and the oiliness that we're just trying to avoid so if you do go down at the line of a polyglutamic acid ditch the moisturizer you don't need it and um, I hope this is kind of cleared up if I was to choose if we were doing a battle of the hydrating acids for me it's hyaluronic all the time it's cheaper the pro is it's cheaper 
it is um, much easier to find. There's much more a wider range of products which hyaluronic acid is in. Um, it sinks into the skin without a trace, which I prefer. And it's just an all around great addition to help support the other steps in your skincare routine. Polyglutamic acid is great at preventing the pros, it's great at preventing uh, transepidermal water loss. It is more hydrating than hyaluronic acid. Whether it's 10 times as hydrating, that's disputed, but it's definitely more hydrating and it will leave your skin feeling plump and supple. The cons are it leaves a film. I hate that personally. I don't like that. It's up to you whether you like that in skincare or can tolerate that in skincare. I don't like it. I like my skincare to be invisible. This definitely isn't. I don't like the gel-like consistency. It's hard to spread than the more liquid serum that you get with hyaluronic acid. And it's more expensive. So they're the cons for that. You choose your mind. I'd love to know. Are you team um, polyglutamic or are you team hyaluronic? Leave me, leave me a comment below and let me know which is your go-to. Have you tried polyglutamic acid? Are you tempted? Are you going to give it a go? The Inculus one is fantastic and it's reasonably priced. So if you do want to try it, there's no harm in trying it. Always patch test behind the ear before you do, but there's no harm in trying it. Jump over to the Inkey List and give it a go. Guys, I hope you found this useful. I just thought I'd debunk, demythify some of these terms and things get very complicated. And I think in skincare, we're always trying to one-up the next thing. Like, what? when's the next thing that's going to be even better than polyglutamic acid and even more hydrating? We end up escalating and escalating and escalating. And where do we stop? So I thought I'd sit down, I'd give you the lowdown on what my take is on both of these hydrating acids and let you make your own mind up. I'd love to know your thoughts. So sign up in the comments. If you could give this video a thumbs up, that really helps out on the channel and helps YouTube to understand that the content's worth watching, which hopefully it is. And if you've heard any snoring whatsoever in this video, I apologize. I've got a dog sleeping down here. I've got a cat sleeping over here. I'll just swizz him around, see if you can see him. Um, that's, um, that's my cat, Marcel. He's been snoring away through the entire filming. So hopefully it's not been too distracting. And um, wherever you are in the world, guys, sending lots and lots of love and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.